In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gathered together in God's grace and love, we are drawn together on this holy night to hear the good news proclaimed. Gathered together in God's grace and love, we are nourished by the promises of God made known at the font and at the table. Come, let us adore him. Gathered together in God's grace and love, we reflect the light of Christ to shine upon the darkness we encounter. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Let us adore him.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. 
Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Augsburg and Merry Christmas. We give thanks for your presence here tonight, and if you're visiting with us, a special welcome to you, and please let us know how we can walk with you on your faith journey. Just a few announcements as we gather for worship this evening, and one is a reminder that due to our current COVID protocols, we have had to change the way that we share in Holy Communion. So on your way in this evening, you probably received one of these little hourglass-shaped things that includes both your bread and wine. And you'll hold on to those, and then during communion, Pastor Carter and I will come down, beginning in the middle, and speaking to you as we go down each row, each pew. And then for those of you on the other side, we'll make our way around the back to be as close to you as possible. So if we don't speak to you from the middle, we'll make our way back to you. And we invite you to receive the communion when we actually come to you. Then you'll notice at the end of the night, as we make our way out, that there are receptacles in the back for you to place these ends. And we thank you for joining us in this change as we are still able to share in Holy Eucharist even in these challenging times. We will continue tonight our tradition of making our way out together, holding our candlelights and going out into the world to be sent by God's word and benediction. And at that time, please follow the pastors as they come to your pew and invite you to move forward, mindful not to forget anything you've come in with tonight. Beyond those worship logistics, just a reminder that as you may have seen on the way in this evening, our angel tree continues. This year, our partners at Anthony's Plot have needs for a number of children for gifts of all types and sizes. Anthony's Plot as a community has the tradition of celebrating and sharing those presents on Epiphany at the end of the 12 days of Christmas. So we're perfectly within our window. You can get a name tonight and learn more about the gift and then bring that back before January 3rd in order for us to share. So we hope that you can share in that this evening as there are still names available out in the narthex. A reminder that this Sunday we'll worship one time at 1030, and then beginning in the new year, we always worship every week at 830 and 11 here inside, and our outdoor gathering space worship at 515 each Sunday evening. And we would love to see you throughout the year. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who were zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. 
But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is reported that almost 100 million Americans, not quite a third, but a whole lot of people, this holiday season will gather together for a special moment to share in. Some in places close to home, others far away from where they live. And in this moment, they will experience the sights and sounds of this season. And they will be inspired by a message of hope. Now, many will call this the center of their life this time of year. Others will do it because they've been invited by others, and others will do so simply because Grandma made them. If you think 100 million people are gathered to be inspired by a message of hope in all the midst of all of this, and you're thinking, that's church? Well, my hook worked. I'm actually talking about something else. According to market research, this holiday season, 100 million people will watch a Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> Incredible. It's the most watched network this time of year. And you're laughing because many of you are guilty of that and have shared in that pleasure. Those of you who haven't probably know about it or know someone who is suffering from a Hallmark Christmas movie addiction. Now, if you haven't and you're completely clueless, that's okay because one of our staff clued me into the fact that a guy named John Atkinson created the Hallmark Christmas movie plot generator. And so let me give you just three examples from this chart. I feel like we need some music. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so maybe plot number one, a career-oriented interior designer returns to her small town at Christmas to save the family business and magically falls in love with an old flame. Does that sound like a Hallmark Christmas movie? Yep. Or how about this one? A big city lawyer returns to her small town at Christmas to stop some corporate closure and magically falls in love with a sensitive guy in plaid and his dog. I think Candace Cameron was in that one. Or how about this one? The plot generator, create, plot generator created a recently single writer returns to her small town at Christmas to appease that meddling parent and magically falls in love with Christmas, her hometown once again, and some guy. <laughs> you see, these plot generators, no matter what the story, 
many of them created each year, and then they also do a Christmas in July recap if you need your fix. These Hallmark Christmas movies are designed to, to do something, right? To grab a hold of the watcher and to give them a, a challenge of almost predicting the plot before it happens, a sense of knowing what's going to happen, but maybe still with that surprise twist, being inspired by hope in the end of it all. So how about this one that I generated for you tonight? A carpenter from the house of David and his pregnant fiance returned to his small town at Christmas time to participate in a census and magically falls in love with the Son of God born in a manger. You see, what these Hallmark Christmas movies do is they capture a sense of a, of a theme, right? They know how to write these because in every part of this, as we saw in this generator, it, it captures something, right? First, it acknowledges who we are, oftentimes pointing out all of the broken things in our life that usually happen far off in the big city. And then the next thing after the character is described, then, then we're reminded that we return where we are to where we find our roots. And then there's some sort of agent or action of change, something that happens that does something big. And as a result of that change, there's this, this epic captivation that finally exposes the true reason for it all. Right? Here we are in this story. And we often in our lives long to live a story like this, right? That it is so beautiful and so thematic that we would think our own lives might be worthy of a Hallmark Christmas movie. But as we're reminded in this gospel text from Luke, this carefully crafted story of the nativity where Luke wants to make sure to put together details of all of the time and place and things that come together. And even though biblical scholars might be challenged by the way some of those dates rub up against each other, it's this idea of saying that something was happening to describe who we are, how God works in Joseph and Mary as they return to their roots to come back to the city of Judea and Bethlehem where Joseph would be counted as part of his family, the lineage of David. And there in the midst of it all, an action of change would happen. It would be time for Mary to give birth and the only place to do so would be that special and holy place, not expected, the plot twist, because there was no room in the inn and so for them to give birth in a manger. And after all of that, that discovery that not only is this a moment that Mary shares, that this promise that was given to her, but that God has proclaimed this to others, for the angels have gone out into the fields to proclaim it to the shepherds so that they too might come and tell Mary that they know the true reason for the season and that they too have been captivated by what God has done. That is still what God does in this text for us. Because when we think of this nativity story, this way that God worked by bringing a baby into the world who would become the son of God and the savior of all people, we often look at this as a story of the past. But just as we can generate new threads and new themes for Hallmark Christmas movies, so too do we recognize that God invites us into this nativity story that it is not simply an action of two millennia ago, but it is a challenge and a call for us to recognize our place in the story as well. Because to borrow from this theme that plays out, God first of all recognizes that each of us in who we are, that God has made us different, that God has made us unique parts of the body of Christ, that God gives us the things that bring us joy and the things that bring us challenge, and for each of us, those are different. And in the midst of that, we understand that who we are often leads to all of our challenges of life. That just like the protagonist of every story in a Hallmark movie and some sort of challenge that they're facing, we too acknowledge the challenges of our broken world around us. 
the challenge of the sin that we face each day, the challenge of our own misgivings, of our own thoughts, of the things that we do and say that we'd rather not, those things that separate us from the love of God. And even though as we gather together tonight, all from different places, all made different in the image of God, God once again, just like in every story, calls us back home. God draws us together to the place where we are made at home in the gift of baptism. God roots us here at the table, and God once again calls us home. And in this moment, we aren't entering this opportunity to save a family business or to stop a corporate closure, but rather we do something different. That God in to pause from the weariness of this world, that God calls us in to just leave the chaos behind, even if just for an hour, that God draws us in so that no matter what else we're facing in life, God gives us an opportunity to pause and see that there is something bigger. And once we're here, once we're gathered, once we've heard familiar word, once we hear it in familiar song, we too are captivated. We are drawn together and held together by the fact that this baby that so many saw in the manger and fell in love with now has grown into the fullness of Jesus Christ. And the love of God that Jesus has shown to us is then reflected in our lives. And we can't be anything but captivated by the fact that no matter how broken we are, no matter how useless we feel, no matter how anxious things seem in the world around us and the craziness of having to deal with a new Greek letter and the uncertainty of what the future brings, that in the midst of all of that, God still holds on to us. And God draws us in through the love of Jesus Christ. And so that once we find ourselves in that love made known in word and at the font and at the table, then God gives us again that opportunity to see the gift of salvation and the promise of what God has in store for us. I mentioned at the beginning that it's one of those moments that a Hallmark movie hopes to inspire with a message of hope. But we too gather together in this time, in this place, in this weird world that we are living in to be inspired by a message of hope, not just in these cheesy words of my sermon tonight, but in the story of what God did, the story of what happened in a little town of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. We are inspired by hope, by a message that as the words of Isaiah were heard tonight as Pastor Katie read them, that indeed we do have this Christ child that grows into being a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace. And to hold on to those gifts promised to us in Isaiah and lived out in Jesus, that we are not in this alone, that the gift of having a counselor and one to guide us in Jesus' words that the gift of knowing that God is indeed mightier than anything in the world around us that befalls us, that the gift to know that the everlasting Father is greater than no matter what shortcomings we face in this world, and the gift of knowing that no matter how divisive around us this world seems, that we have a Prince of Peace, that we are inspired by a message of hope that we are inspired by a message of hope found in the real presence of Christ in the body and blood that we will share in in just a few moments. Because we need that message of hope. We need to gather here tonight to know that no matter what the life generator brings us, to no matter how easy or hard our lives is, that no matter what, God is with us in this journey, not just tonight, but every night. That God loves us no matter who we are. That God draws us home. That God reminds us of that captivating moment of change found in the nativity story we hear tonight. And that God sustains us 
with that gift of love, of knowing that we are loved unconditionally and eternally. Not only this night, but every day of our journey, even if there's no guy in plaid and his dog. Thanks be to God. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. Lord, in your mercy. Love whispers to a weary world that the time for rest and restoration has come. Maintain healthy cycles of wake and sleep for all creatures. Where light pollution disrupts natural rhythms, encourage new practices. Lord, in your mercy. Love cries to a warring world that the time for peace is at hand. Direct those in power who make decisions on behalf of others that they nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Lord, in your mercy. Love sings through the wails of a newborn baby. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, or need this night. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. This evening we lift up John Boutwell, Tommy Shutt, Pat Pack, Michelle Page, Sandy Beard, Alice Elsner, Lucas Bradley, Carol Spence, Daniel Hudgens, Marion Apel, Darlene Wall, Elaine Williams, Harold Beavis, Angela Ward, Bruce Johnson, Bob Baines, the Michael Robinson family, Jay Wise, Bob Milner, Dan Moore, Hank Farrar, John Paolo Pasquinelli, Susan Sherwin, Kathy Olson, and all those we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Bless new and expectant parents or caregivers, especially those who are alone or afraid this night. Pour out your love upon families of every kind. Lord, in your mercy. God's ever-present love is proclaimed through the faithful who came before us. We give you thanks for Mary, John the baptizer, Elizabeth his mother, Joseph the dreamer, and all who point toward your love. We remember Robert Pfeiffer, the Reverend John Bollinger, Sandra Perkins, Peg Keller, Don Nelson, Esther Knutson, Chris Robinson, Richard Shutt, Jessica Holmes, Roland Wren, Alvina Wren, Lee McCusick, Gary Brewster, 
Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please be seated. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, 
ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Amen. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of the gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it.
be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with countenance and give you peace. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, friends. <laughs>